in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name. And at the sound of that name, every knee shall bow. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank 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 that we're conducting online. Many churches across the country are really dealing with the same thing that our church is dealing with. The stay-at-home orders, no gathering. All right. And praise God that God has technology that was invented that we can use to speak out and still get his word out. Amen. And I pray that you, your family, are, are safe and blessed today. And I plead the blood of Jesus over your life, over your home, over your children, over all that God has made you stewards. And I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for each and every one of them. For all of you that have continued to sow into the ministry, again, thank you. Thank you. I can never thank you enough. My wife could not thank you enough. Our ministry could not thank you enough for being faithful and dedicated, <clears throat> even during challenging times like this. But I want to say thank you. It is well appreciated. We love you. We love you. And by the grace of God, hopefully we'll be back together <clears throat> in the house, in the house, in the house to fellowship, worship together. Amen, because you know what? I and my wife miss you so much, so much. We love you. God bless. Father God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that you will guide my tongue, Lord God. Allow me, Lord, to speak with clarity. Allow me, Lord God, to speak with accuracy, Lord God. Holy Spirit, you have your way. Let every heart be open to receive the engrafted word of God. Let their hearts be with fertile ground, Lord God. That the word that goes forth not only produces in their lives, but will be a blessing in the lives of others. Father, we come against every form of distraction, Lord God, that the enemy would try. Father, we bind it up now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for a good and wonderful service in your name, Lord Jesus, in your name. And let everybody say, Amen. Amen? All right. Last week, as you know, <clears throat> we were going over the blood okay we spoke about the blood <clears throat> excuse me and we looked at several different scriptures that spoke about the blood I, I don't have time today to retrack all of that so if you happen not to have caught our, our first part of this it might be good for you to go back and catch it you can probably look at it you can look at it on YouTube okay to bring yourself up <clears throat> as I said last week many of you are seasoned Christians you know about the blood many of you have wondered about the blood many of you have heard people saying I plead the blood and may not have understood it but that's why God has me teaching this today because understanding the blood and why Christ's blood was so precious it is vitally important it is vitally important. In Leviticus, it says that with there is the life is in the blood. If you stop and think about your own bodies, if your blood was to be drained, you would just be a corpse. There would be no life in your body. I want you to understand that understanding about the blood of Christ is very important. <clears throat> Amen. All right, turning your Bibles to Hebrews 10 chapter 10 verse 1 and what we while you're turning there what we want to look at today we want to look at why the blood of Jesus is so precious we want to look at <clears throat> the blood of Jesus redeemed us it's because of the blood of Jesus that we have forgiveness the blood of Jesus reconciled us through the blood of Jesus we have been justified 
through the blood of Jesus we have also been sanctified it's because of the blood that our sins are washed away and it's due to the blood that we have access to the Father amen All right. Hebrews chapter 10 reads this way <clears throat> the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming not the realities of them for this reason it can never by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year make perfect those who draw near to worship otherwise would they not have stopped being offered in other words what this is saying is if those sacrifices had been sufficient enough they would not have to continue them to continue with them okay then it goes on to say in verse <clears throat> 3 but those sacrifices are annually re annual reminders what is that saying to us that every year they had what is called atonement sacrifices would have been were given for the sins of the people every year they had to have atonement but what atonement did it only covered sin. It did not get rid of sin. It only covered sin. So the sin still remained there. It just it just couldn't be seen by God because of the blood. Okay? Verse 5. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, <clears throat> Sacrifices and offerings you do not desire, but a body, but a body you prepared for me a body you prepared for me with burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased then I said here I am it is written about me in the scrolls I have come to do your will my God first he said sacrifices and offerings burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire nor were you pleased with them though they were offered in accordance with the law verse 9 then he said here I am I have come to do your will what was the will of God that the Lord Jesus Christ be the sacrifice the final sacrifice for mankind what, what bulls and goats and all the other sacrifices we see conducted over in the Old Testament were unable to do the sacrifice of Christ was going to get it done amen amen then he said verse 9 here I am I have come to do your will he set aside the first to establish the second <clears throat> and by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifices of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all see from the very beginning the very beginning with Adam and Eve when sin was conducted by them when they when they committed sin blood had to be shed because when God used the animal skins to cover them an animal had to shed his blood blood had to be sh shed for the sin okay it had to be all right all the all the sacrifices in the Old Testament were a foreshadow what is a foreshadow it's showing you something to come it may not be the exact same thing but it's showing you something that's going to come it was a foreshadow of what was to come the Bible says that the blood of animals cannot take away sin but it was a foreshadow what is the foreshadow of it was a foreshadow of the Lamb of God coming to take away the sins of the world which was Jesus remember what John the Baptist said he said behold the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world okay so all that sacrificing we see in the Old Testament was being done pointing us to the cross pointing us to Jesus okay see God is holy and just God is light and in him there is no darkness God showed, showed us all along the way in the Old Testament what was coming Jesus was coming the final sacrifice the final sacrifice was coming the final sacrifice was coming so the question is why is Jesus blood so precious 
Because see, Jesus wasn't just a man born in Bethlehem. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He was the son of God. There was no man needed to impregnate Mary. The Holy Spirit did. Because remember I read earlier over there in Hebrew 10, we, we read together where it says, Here am I, you prepared a body for me. See, the preparation for his body, it came directly from God. See, so his blood, his blood was not tainted. His blood was not tainted at all. Because everything in him was perfect and without sin. See, when people were going down to the Jordan River to be baptized, it was a symbolization of being washed. They would go down dirty and then it symbolized coming up clean. But when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, see, it was the absolute opposite. Jesus was clean before he went down. But when he went down and came back up, it represented him carrying all of our sins. He went down clean, came up dirty. Why was he dirty? Not because of his sin, but because of ours, because of the sins of the world. Because his main mission, his purpose, his, his purpose was to do what? To come and rescue mankind. See, the love that God showed mankind was this, that he loved man so much he loved his creation so much that the creator came to live among the creation. The creator came to deliver the creation. See, we've all sinned. And like I said, our blood is tainted. Okay? So, it had to be a perfect, untainted blood that had to be sacrificed once and for all. Once and for all. And I'll say that again so you understand that. See, because a lot of people don't understand, they, 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 they still want to have guilt. But see, if you understand about the blood, you will not continue to walk around in guilt. See, the Bible says over in 1 John 1 and 9, it says, confess your faults, confess your faults, confess your sins. And God is just and faithful to forgive you of all unrighteousness. See, but it's the devil that wants you to continue to think about your mistakes. You have to understand that. That's why the Bible says that the devil is the what? The accuser of the brethren. The accuser of the brethren. How many times have you dealt with either family members or, or old friends and, and they bring your past up to you? Even though you've changed, they bring your past up. Well, yeah, I remember when you did this. And how does it make you feel? See, it makes you be in a moment that you just like, you, you don't feel right. But see, if you understand the blood, you can say, yeah, that was me. Yes, I did do that. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's under the blood. God doesn't see it, and I'm not revisiting it. Amen to that. God doesn't see it, and I'm not revisiting it. See, you have to understand, that's what the blood did. Okay? With the blood of Jesus, we have redemption. What does it mean to have redemption? It meant that when Adam and Eve blew it, we had to be redeemed back. Why? It's because it was as if they gave the title deed to mankind to the devil. We still were God's creation. But it was a man that lost the title and it had to be a man to regain it back. That's why over in Corinthians it says that Adam was the first Adam and Jesus was the second Adam. What Adam in the first couldn't do, Jesus did. Amen? So, what does redemption mean? It often, it often refers to the act of buying a slave. Redemption often means buying a slave. It carries the meaning of freeing someone from what? Chains, prison, or slavery. So, the blood, by the blood we have redemption. That means that we've been freed from slavery. We've been sl freed from the chains. Freed from prison. The prison that held us. What prison that held us? Sin, bondage, the enemy. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God 
is eternal life in Jesus Christ. The wages of sin are death. In other words, when you work a job, you get paid wages, right? People that are committing sin, you're going to get paid for what you're doing. Oh, you're going to have a payday, but it's not going to be the kind of payday you want. You have to understand that God has given mankind, he has given mankind so much leniency to get yourselves together. You know, we have a very merciful and compassionate God, but we do have a God also that will stay to his word. See, God doesn't send anyone to hell. People send themselves to hell. See, how do they send themselves to hell? It's because they do not believe in the Christ the anointed one. They do not believe in the son of God. They do not accept what he has to offer. They send themselves to hell. So the blood, we have redemption. Amen. We have redemption. Jesus satisfied the wrath of God that was to come upon us all because of sin. What does that mean? That if Jesus hadn't came and did what he did, to be our sacrifice, to shed his blood, to present his blood for us, then we were doomed. Because we had to pay the cost. Even though Adam and Eve did it, every person that was born into this world after them had sin in them automatically. See, let me explain something to you. First of all, you have the nature of sin. Then you have the act of sin. These are both sins, but they're different. They, they, they're different. The nature of sin is what a person, when they come into the world, is born with automatically. Automatically, you have the nature of sin. Why do you have that? Because it was from Adam and Eve, and it's passed automatically down. That person carries that nature of sin, all right, until they accept Jesus. Once they accept Jesus, it says you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now, you don't have that nature of sin anymore. You're cleansed. But now, you still have the ability after you're saved to sin. Do you understand? Put it like this. A person goes to jail. You go down to the bells bondsman, and you bail them out. Now that person has their freedom, but that person now still has the ability to break the law. Even though they've been freed from one thing, they still have the ability to break the law. So the nature of sin has been resolved by the blood of Jesus. The act of sin is also resolved by Jesus, but what has to happen, you have to confess your faults and your sins to God. Not to no man. You, you talk to God. You talk to God about that. You say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for that. Lord, I'm sorry about that. Because God knows that none of us are perfect. The only person that was perfect is Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He's the only one. So we are going to make mistakes. We're going to blow it, per se, to put it blankly. We're going to blow it at times. But we have to understand that God's love allows us the opportunity. Allows us the opportunity to come to him and say, forgive us. But I'm not talking about a person that wants to sin just to sin. You know it's wrong and you just want to do it anyway. See, you are now abusing the grace and the mercy of God. And that won't continue to happen. Amen? Amen. So by the blood of Christ, we've also been forgiven. Hebrews 9 and 22 reads this way. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. Oh, you need to, if you don't have this scripture marked in your Bible, you need to really mark it. It's Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Now, that's, you can't get any plainer than that. You can't get any. He says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So our forgiveness came through the shedding of Jesus' blood. See, we can now receive forgiveness from God for our sins on the basis of what Jesus did for us, for you and me. All right? God forgives you, not because you just ask him, but on the basis that his son went to the cross and shed his blood 
for your sins. Whatever you ask God, whenever, whenever, when we ask God to forgive us, His forgiveness comes. Not because we say we would do better. Not because we say we're not going to do it again. He forgives us because of what Jesus did on our behalf. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because of what Jesus did on our behalf. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to understand the importance of the blood. Because if you don't understand the importance of the blood, you'll walk around continuously walking in guilt. Believing that you're unforgiven. But if you understand what the blood has done for us, what Christ did for us, then you won't walk around that way. The blood reconciled us. Now we hear a lot, you know, reconciliation. What does that mean? To bring back. That's what it means. To restore to union and friendship after a disagreement. To restore. To restore. Well, mankind had, 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 had a breach. Had a breach. How did mankind have a breach? Because of the sin in the Garden of Eden. Because, and that breach was there. Okay, that breach was there. The only one that could close that and bring that true reconciliation back to mankind was Jesus. All right. And here's a couple of scriptures to show you. Colossians chapter 1 verse 20. And through him to reconcile himself to all things, whether things on earth, things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. That's Colossians 1 and 20. Now look at Romans 3.25. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. Notice he presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life shedding his blood. Romans 3.25. So the blood brought us back it brought us back. So see, you should never feel a part of God, away from God. See, those are your feelings and the enemy trying to, trying to really get you to believe that God doesn't want anything to do with you. How could you think that God doesn't want anything to do with you when the most precious thing in existence Jesus the Christ the Messiah he allowed him to come and give his life for you think about that for you for me I dare you believe that God doesn't want anything to do with you God wants everything to do with you that's why he wanted you to be reconciled he wanted you to be brought back he wanted you to be a part of the family he wanted you to be able to love him like he loves you he wanted you to know that he has done everything that you could have everything Ooh, that's good he has done everything so that you could have everything. God wants you to live a good life. He wants you to live a healthy life. God wants your children to grow up right. He wants all of this for you. And he has provided this for you. But when you start to feel that you're not entitled to it. When you start to feel that you don't have it coming. When you start to feel because of what you did in your past. And in your past could be an hour ago. What you did in your past. You don't deserve this. Well, then you're lying to yourself and you've been deceived. It says, I'm going to read it again, so make sure you get it and understand it. Romans 3.25 For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus Christ sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. What else does the blood do? It justifies us. Look at Romans. You're already in Romans. Go over to Romans chapter 5. Turn over two chapters. Because you, Romans chapter 5. And we're going to look at verses 8 and 9. And while you're, while, while you're going there, I want to give you the definition of justify. Justification means 
being declared righteous. I'm going to say that again. It means being declared righteous. Justified. To be justified means that you have right standing with God. All right. It's a legal term used in the Bible to describe the act of God. In which he, in which he declares that that person is not guilty. Ooh I like that. Which he declares that that person is not guilty. The blood makes you not guilty. The blood makes you not guilty. See, let's let's stop for a minute. Look, remember in, in, in Exodus, we looked at it last week. God told the children of Israel what to do. To take a lamb, when they when they when they sacrifice that lamb, to take the blood, apply it on the doorpost, you know, two sides in the top. He said, take it and apply it on there. He said, mm, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. That's why we call it the Passover. He says, when I see the blood, I'll pass over that house. What, what, what happens when sickness and disease comes our way? We are, have the blood applied. We have to remind ourselves and the enemy. You got to, you got to get going. You got to get gone. Because I am, my, my house, my home, my cars, my children, my life is covered in the blood. It's covered in the blood. You got to start understanding that when the old folks used to say, I plead the blood. What they were doing was bringing the blood up that demonic forces could see. I plead the blood against the devil. I plead the blood against this. They're bringing it up. Because see, there is victory in that blood. There is victory in that blood. See, that blood was shed for you and I. That blood was shed that God could first reconcile us to himself. That God could what? Justify us. And because of that blood, is that blood and that blood alone that has redeemed us, has purchased us. You don't own yourself. God owns you. See, a lot of times we get big headed and think, you know what? Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, this is my life. No, this is God's life that he gave you. When you woke up this morning, that alarm clock didn't wake you up. Because if you think that, if you think the alarm clock woke you go and take it to the mortuary and let it go off and see how many people get up what woke you up this morning was God what woke you up this morning was God allowing you to continue to breathe see you have a purpose God created each and every one of us with a purpose you have to keep seeking God because if you seek God your purpose will find you but you got to seek God people running around talking about I don't know what my purpose is the question is are you seeking God most people that say that they're not really seeking God you got to seek God for real we have too many people faking and shaking in the body of Christ we got too many you know know people that 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 on Sunday they in church praising the Lord and Monday through Saturday they live their life any kind of way right now it is time for us to reevaluate ourselves God has us where right now with what we're going through with this coronavirus mess we need to reset ourselves we need to reprioritize ourselves we need to look at what God is saying to each one of us individually you know I know there's a lot of people saying what God is saying to the church but what is God saying to you that's what you need to be asking. What is he saying to you? So, the blood justifies us. See, God is a holy God. And God must punish sin. He has to be true to himself. See, we all have sinned. There is nothing to look forward to but death and eternal separation if it wasn't for the blood we'd be doomed. If it wasn't for the blood, we'd be doomed. And I want you to understand this. This is important. See, there are certain things that, that every Christian needs to, to be aware of, you know, and, and, and understanding the blood. Okay, let me, let me ask you this. You remember over in, um, uh, with, with uh, Moses, okay, you can look it up in the Google it or those of you that know, you know, how to find it. That Moses, God was going to kill Moses because he hadn't circumcised himself or his sons. But his wife took a rock and circumcised him. And she made this statement. You are a bloody husband to me. 
You are a bloody husband to me. Well, God is our husband. He is our husband. And he requires blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The blood sanctifies you. What does that mean? It's the blood that sets you apart. Look at Hebrews 13 and 12. And so Jesus, Hebrews 13 and 12, and so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy. In other words, that word holy means set apart through his own blood. To make the people holy through his own blood. See, sanctification is a process by which God sets you apart. Okay? It makes you holy. It sets you apart. See, this process will last until the day you die. What does that mean? Every day you live in, you being, you're, going, you're going through a sanctification process. You're going through a sanctification process every day you live. You know, you're not, you haven't arrived yet. You're not there. Every day, every day, every day. It's just like you go, you know, you took a shower, you took a shower yesterday, but you went out and go to work today, you're going to take a shower tonight. Every day you clean yourself up, you know. So every day God is sanctifying. God is cleaning his people. How does he do that? Through the word. Jesus said you're sanctified by the word. A lot of people, you know, that's why they don't really get into the word. But you got to get into the word. You got to read your Bible. You got to start doing some things. You understand me? Not just when you're comfortable. You understand me? You got to start really getting into your word. Well, Pastor, I don't understand the word. Well, then, why don't you ask the author, the one that wrote it, ask the Holy Spirit to explain it to you. Because he wrote it, he'll explain it to you. See, you have to start doing some things. See, don't think that just walk with God is so easy. It's not, it's not impossible, and it's not really easy. You have to understand that you're going to have to walk. You're going to have to speak it. You're going to have to do this thing. You're going to have to rely on the strength of the Holy Spirit to get you through. To get you through. The blood washes away sin. It washes away sin. <laughs> The blood is just so important. The blood also gives us access. Access to the Father. <laughs> Ephesians 2.18 For through him, Jesus, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. I really want you to understand that my intent today was to, to wrap up what we started last week for the simple fact is that years and years ago I was taught about the blood and yet at that time you would hear people speak about the blood. Now we come to a time where we hear very little people speaking about the blood of Christ and the importance of the blood. You know, yes, we could be teaching on prosperity, uh, so many other things, you know. But right now, you need, to, you need to understand about the blood because, see, we all need divine protection right now. We need protection. But what we're faced with, what we're going through, we need protection. And it's the blood that protects you. It's the blood that protects you. And I want you to understand, it is the blood of Christ that protects you. So, I want you to continue to study on the blood. I want you to continue to study on the blood because it is so vitally important. Now turn in your Bibles to John 6 chapter because right now I forgot to tell you earlier but we're going to do communion. Most of you that know when you come on you know for the last several weeks I've been doing communion at the end of the service. Um, so hopefully you got everything prepared ahead of time. But I want to go ahead and read this. If you haven't gotten it prepared, I'm going to read a few scriptures regarding communion. In John 6, 48 through 51, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Your father ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. 
and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Luke 24, 30. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and broke it and broke it, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. There are many different scriptures throughout the New Testament that speak about the communion. Communion means oneness, fellowship. So as you take your vine and your bread, Father, we hold this up now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that, Father, we, we partake of the bread which represents the body that was given for us. We also drink from this cup. And this vine represents the blood that was shed for us. And Jesus said, as often as we do this, we put him in remembrance. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Love you. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your Sunday. We'll continue to pray for you.